Hi everyone, welcome back. This is how we left the sunset dress at the end of the last video. So today I'm going to finish off around the top, I'm going to put the eyelets in the back and then I'm going to do the hem and that will be the end of the construction part for this dress. To finish around the top I like to just put a few stitches through all of the layers to hold this seam down here. Sometimes you see strapless dresses and the boning sort of comes up higher than the outside layer. I find that just a few stitches helps to hold everything neatly and stops that happening. You can just do it on the machine if you want and just machine down a little bit. But it's quite easy to hit the boning because it's right next to your seams here. So I'm using a double thread. I'm going to start around maybe an inch and a half down and put my needle right through where the seam is. And then I'm going to make sure I'm coming up right through the seam on the other side. This is hard to do standing around a camera. Like that. Just making sure that all the seams are really well lined up. And then I'm going to go back through and again back through that seam on the inside. And then through back to the outside again and I'm not too worried if my stitches show a little bit on the outside because it's going to have all the flowers and beads and crystals on so that will be hidden if you're not going to be embellishing yours just make sure you take enough time to hide the stitches well enough cool so I'm just going to finish here and just knot my thread off here and then I'm going to do this on all the other seams as well now all my stitching's done, I'm just going to press around the top, so I'm using a hot iron with steam, I'm just resting my dress on my little ham here, and I'm going to cover it with a pressing cloth just to keep the edges nice, and I'm just going to take out the pins as I go and press all the way around the top. I'm just pressing right on the edge. And then you can see the nice crisp finish I've got on that top edge once it's been pressed. Next it's time to eyelet where it's going to lace up. So I've just moved the pins at the back just to hold the layers together and I've put them just outside that second piece of boning. So I've got two pieces of straight steel boning and the eyelets are going to go in between them. Um, I do my eyelets one inch apart making sure the two at the waist are sat either side of where the, the sort of narrowest part of the waist is. So the first thing I do is like if you pull it like that you can see where the waist is here. So I kind of put a, a pin where the smallest part is and I know I can measure either side of that. So I'd put my eyelets in one inch apart. Um, different corset makers have different ways of doing eyelets, different gaps. Um, for tight lacing corsets some people put extra eyelets at the waist just to take some of the pressure off. But I find for dresses like this, just having the one inch gap evenly all the way out the back works just fine. But you can do whatever spacing works for you. Cool. So that pins my waist. So I'm going to make sure I've got one set either side of the waist. And that gives me a nice one at the top from there. So I'm going to put pins through at every inch. If I'm doing a light coloured fabric, I use my disappearing pen to do this part. It's a bit... But if you've got dark fabric, or you don't have a pen, the pins work just as well. So that's where each eyelet's going to go, and then you can see those two are going to sit nicely either side of the waist, so that we can pull the waist in when it's laced up. I'm going to repeat this on the other side, making sure both sides match up. Okay, so I've got my pins in both sides, so I can put my eyelets in now. So I use these two-piece eyelets or grommets. I think they seem to have be called eyelets or grommets, depending on where you are in the world. I get mine from the Eyelet Supply Company here in Australia. They're based in Victoria, so eyelets.com.au. But they only sell in bulk, so you have to buy massive bags. But they're really great eyelets. So I've got my fronts and my backs. I've got my closing tool and a hammer to hammer them closed with. To make the holes to put them through I use an awl to pierce the hole and then I use this thing to stretch the hole. You don't want to cut the hole the size you want because it's going to fray out from underneath it so you want to make a small hole and then stretch it up. 
Um, I've had this tool for years. I don't know what it is. I think I found it in a car boot sale if I remember right. Um, but it's perfect because it tapers. So if you can find anything that's strong and tapered for stretching your hole, it should work. So anything like a skewer or a metal knitting needle or a chopstick maybe. So anything that you can put through your little hole to stretch it to the size you need to get the eyelets through and then it won't fray out and your eyelet won't pop out. So how I put my eyelets in is I go to my first hole. I use my tape measure to measure the width of the gap we've got and take my pin out holding it really still there and then I put my all through at the halfway mark between the two lines of stitching and I use that to push it through and make the hole then I get my tapered metal tool and I push that through as well so I'm working from the back to the front and then I twist that to stretch the hole which can be hard work depending on what fabric you've used or how many layers you've got then I put the front of my eyelet on there put the back of the eyelet on here and then I can kind of push that back through with the tool and the eyelet should pop through the hole sometimes you have to do it a couple of times to get the hole the right size there it comes and that's really snugly in that hole then I take the front and the back put them together put my closing tool on and hammer it closed you can get presses as well to do this which is a little bit faster and that's our eyelet in this one's a little bit loose I'm actually going to move to the floor to hammer them and do this because my bench is quite wobbly so I never get them in tight enough hammering them up here whereas my floor is concrete so if I do it down there I get a much better finish so that's how you put your eyelets in so I'm going to yeah move to the floor and do the rest of them here's my eyelets all in and the next thing I'm going to do is put the ribbon in and lace it up and then I'm going to try it on so I can work out what size panel I need to put in the centre back and so I can try and figure out what length to do the hem to. Um, it's going to be really hard to try and hem this on myself <laughs> over a hoop skirt. So I haven't quite figured out how I'm going to do that. But I will put it on, put the petticoat on and we'll have a look and see what's possible. Alright, I'm in. I think I may have lost a couple of kilos since I made it from when I was sick. So it actually laces right together now. And it's just a touch loose. On my bus so I've just put a couple of um, bus cups in there and that's helped but I'm really happy with how it's sitting overall so let me move back so you can see a bit more and um, so it's wrinkling up a little bit here and I think all that needs where I put the stitches at the top I think we just need a couple of stitches to hold the top layer down there you see how that's got rid of it so I stitch there and there that holds it a lot smoother but we're actually because I'm going to be sewing the flowers on that's going to help hold it so that's the front and that's the back with it on yeah you can see it's laced right together but it's also stopped giving me that squish here that it was giving me in the second um, twirl so that's okay I'm happy with that all right so that's the close-up of the top part let me show you full length As you can see, I've left loads of length at the front, so I'm going to need to take some off there. But I actually really like how it just sweeps the floor at the sides and the back, so I'm going to keep it long at the side and back. So what I need to do now <laughs> is try and put some pins in the front. This is so hard on yourself. I'm to try and sort of look... where that bit of blue fluff is sitting. I really recommend having someone to help you do hems and not trying to do hems like this on yourself because it's so difficult. Drop this and see how it's looking. 
So I'd say that front length, as far as I can tell, looks pretty good. So I'm going to hem the front and the side front to that length and then leave the longer length coming round to the back. To hem it, I've hung my dress up on a coat hanger and I've got it hanging sort of as straight as I can on the hanger. Um, I'm not doing this over the hoop petticoat because the hoop petticoat moves so much you think you've got it even then the petticoat moves and it looks all wonky again. So I thought hanging it up and seeing it straight is probably going to be a better way to get an even hem. So the first thing I'm going to do is pop pins in where I've got it folded from where I just tried it on. Oh, and I've decided not to put a panel in the back under the lacing. I normally do, um, partly because it's lacing right together on me now, um, so there's no gap, but also because I completely forgot to airbrush a piece of fabric to match the top of the dress to make the panel from, so I'd have to use black or navy, and it's not kind of quite matched, so I'm going to leave it without a panel for now. Actually, it's pretty straight considering I did it on myself. And then from just before the side panel, I'm just going to drop that down to the length I've already got. So we keep that back longer. So it's like pins on the side. And then the front. And you know what, if this isn't... If it's not 100% straight, I'm not worried because it's going to have the flowers on the edge. Holding it and pulling my pins together to see if they line up, that seems to be working. So to do the other side so it matches, I've brought both my side seams together, right sides together. And I'm going to hold those hems at the same length and just put a pin lining up with the pin on the original side. So there you go, so that's both side seams together. I put my pin through, so now I know both those pins are in the same place. If I do that all the way along, I should end up with a, a line at the same angle curving down as on the first side. So by doing this, I'm assuming that my hem is the same length on both sides. If you want to be completely 100% accurate, you're better off measuring down from the waist on both sides to make sure they're lined up. But for this, this is going to work because the flowers will hide any unevenness. Excellent. So that line of pins <coughs> on this side should now match the line of pins on this side. Now I'm happy with where my pins are for the hem. I'm going to cut one inch below it and that will give me one inch to hem. So I'll turn it up half an inch and then half an inch again. And the finished hem will be where my pins are. All right, it's cut, let's have a look. Looks like it's just dipping down a tiny bit there. Yeah, you can see I've just got it longer on one side, so I'm just gonna pin this together and just line that up to even it. I'm just folding the, the center front panel in half here. Excellent, I'm happy with that. I'm going to take these pins out because I know I've got an inch to turn up. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pin the lining to the outside at the, the correct seams and pin along, then I can cut the lining to the same length. So if you've watched my videos before, you'll know you'd know that I normally do a bag hem at this point. So I pin both layers together, leave a back seam open, pull it through into a bag hem. But because I'm going to hand sew so many embellishments onto this dress, I'm actually going to hem these layers separately so I can still get inside it to sew all the flowers on. Then once I've done with that part, I'll just catch all the layers together at the hem so they sit properly against each other. So you can see once I've got these layers pinned together, it's easy to cut the lining to match exactly the length of the outside layer. And then when I do the hem, I'll just turn the lining up a fraction more than the one inch seam allowance just to make sure it's going to sit above it. 
but again because we're putting the flowers on if it does hang the same length it's not going to show like it would on a hem that doesn't have embellishments on it okay to pin my hems what i do is i turn it up half an inch let's just give that measure it as i go make sure it is half an inch and i pop pins in kind of diagonally like that Then once I've gone a fair way round, I turn it up again. Then I put my pins in diagonally again. And I put them kind of once through the bottom of the hem and then once through the fabric above the hem. And then it means this part can just move as you stitch around it. Because I'm going to machine stitch this because the stitching is going to be hidden um, by the flowers. So as you stitch around, your curves can just sort of slightly move and you can get them sitting how you want them to as you stitch it. Um, again, if I wasn't embellishing this skirt, I wouldn't machine stitch. I would hand stitch or do a bag hem because I hate seeing machine stitching on the right side of dresses like this. So, so I'm going to pin all the way around the outside layer and the lining layer. Then I'm going to machine stitch along the edge here to hold it in place. And then I'm going to press both hems. And then that is it for the construction part. to it um, I thought about adding some stiffener at one point but I don't think it needs it it's quite stiff anyway plus we're gonna have all the embellishments on there and then there's the lining stitched and pressed as well you can see once I join the lining and the outside seams later it'll sit really neatly <laughs> you can see one of my dribbles from where I painted it there so that is the construction part done so in the next video I can cut out the appliques and pin them on so I've got these, these gorgeous black flowers. I've actually started cutting some of these out already, to, ready to pin on, pin on. So you can sort of get an idea here of how, how that's going to look. So that's that one. I've got loads more to cut still. And then I've got this beautiful beaded one. If you go back to the very first episode in this series, I show you the laces close up if you want to go and have a look. So I can't wait to start getting the black onto this dress. Thank you for watching. I hope you're enjoying seeing this dress come together. Um, yeah, it's taken longer than I expected, but it's getting there. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video very soon.